Hi everybody, this is Kelly and Lisa from Divinity Designs. We're here to welcome you to the Learn at Home event, Slimline Card Basics. Slimline cards are all the rage today, so I'm sure you're going to want to hop right on it. I hope you're able to learn a lot about this fabulous topic. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the videos, and don't forget to take some notes. Hi, this is Lisa Somerville for Divinity Designs. Today, I'm here to share with you our Slimline Die Collection. Divinity Designs currently carries 12 different Slimline dies, along with an assortment of Slimline paper pads. The Slimline paper pads measure six by nine so that you can easily use them along with the slimline die sets. Our slimline dies are designed to be used with the slimline card base. This is an extra large die and requires a large die cutting machine so that the die will fit through your machine. This die is nine by seven and three quarters and scored in the center. When folded, it's three and seven eighths by nine and fits into a number 10 envelope. You'll die cut and emboss this die following the directions for your die cutting machine. Emboss your die using a silicone mat. This will give you the added details to the die cut. Then fold on your score line. You can use a bone folder for a nice crisp score. When using our dies, you can always tell which dies need to be embossed as that's indicated by the two shades of purple on the packaging and the web image. Now I'm going to share with you the slimline dies. We have slimline rectangles. This is a set of seven dies. It coordinates with the slimline card base and the slimline layering rectangles. Here they are die cut and layered on top of each other. Next, we have the slimline layering rectangles. This is a set of six dies. It coordinates with the slimline card base and the slimline rectangles. I have put an L on the back of all my layering dies so that when I reach for them, I can easily tell which ones are the layering dies. And here they are layered on top of each other. Shown here are the slimline rectangles with the slimline layering rectangles. The blue are the rectangles, those are the larger dies. The yellow are the layering rectangles. The slimline scallop rectangles coordinates with the slimline card base and the slimline rectangles. Shown here are the slimline scallop rectangles layered on top of each other. When using the slimline scalloped rectangles with the slimline card base, you're going to notice that the scalloped rectangle is a tad larger than the card base. This is so that none of the edges show through to the front. Here's a sample using the slimline scalloped rectangles with the card base. Shown here are the slimline scalloped rectangles along with the slimline rectangles. When using these three die sets, be sure to die cut and emboss following the directions for your die cutting machine. Again, when you see the two shades of purple on the packaging, that indicates you should emboss your dies to bring out the detail of the dies. Currently, we have three different border dies. Slimline Curvy Slopes, this is a set of two dies. The Slimline Clouds, a set of three dies. and slimline grasses, a set of two dies. When you die cut the border dies, you'll notice that there is no bottom edge on these dies. 
That is so that you can make them as wide as you want to use on your projects. Now let me show you the die cuts. Here's the slimline curvy slopes. You can use it for snow or hills. The slimline clouds and the slimline grasses. We have a grass hill and a grass lawn. You can use them separately or you can use them together. Here's what they look like when they're die cut into cardstock. Again, remember there is no bottom edge on the die so that you can cut them as wide as you like using your paper trimmer. And then simply cut the edge off. Now I'm going to share with you some of our decorative slimline background dies. We have the slimline flower petal background. This die coordinates with the slimline card base. Here you can see a die cut. You can add the slimline layering rectangle behind it to add some color. Layer that on a slimline rectangle. You can also add that on top of the slimline scalloped rectangle and then add to the slimline card base. Shown here, it's just layered on top of the slimline rectangle. This is the slimline pierce window frame. It coordinates with the slimline card base and has three window openings. The window frame dies are perfect for shaker cards. You can use it along with the slimline layering rectangles to add color behind the windows. Layer it with one of the slimline rectangles and also layer on top of the slimline scalloped rectangles and then onto the slimline card base. Now I'm going to share with you three of our newest slimline background dies. We have the slimline bubbles background, coordinates with the slimline card base. The slimline pierced frame coordinates with the slimline card base. And the slimline rounded windows, which coordinates with the slimline card base. These three slimline dies can also be used along with the slimline rectangles, the slimline layering rectangles, and slimline scalloped rectangles. I'll show you some samples. Here's the slimline pierced frame, shown here with the slimline layering rectangles. Here I've used the slimline bubbles background with the largest die from the slimline rectangles. Here it is with the slimline scalloped rectangles. For another fun decorative look, you can use it along with the slimline rounded windows, like I have on this card here, using the Great Catch Stamp Die Duo Set. Here's the slimline rounded windows with the slimline layering rectangle. I use the layering rectangle to go along with the slimline rounded windows because the slimline rounded windows is the same size as the largest die from the slimline rectangles. If you use it along with the slimline rectangles, you'll notice that the edge of the rectangle sticks out. Using the layering rectangle, you don't see the edge of the rectangle. Now I'm going to share with you just a few samples that I've created using our Slimline Die Collection. Kelly Holland will be on next to share with you additional samples. Here we have the Slimline Card Base, Slimline Layering Rectangles, Slimline Rectangles, Slimline Pierced Frame, along with a sentiment found in our July Blessings Box subscription kit from the stamp set called Let's Celebrate, and a sneak peek at both our sunflower layering combo die and our festive fall slimline sized paper pad. This card uses the Great Catch Stamp Die Duo, Slimline Card Base, Slimline Pierced Frame, Slimline Layering Rectangles, Now I have two Christmas cards to share with you using our Slimline Die Collection. This card features the Slimline Card Base, Slimline Scalloped Rectangles, the Slimline Rounded Windows, Slimline Curvy Slopes, 
along with additional Divinity Designs stamp die duos, custom dies, and paper pad collections. Last month, I created a card similar to this using our slimline dies. I had to use two of our rectangles to make an opening. Now we have the slimline pierced frame die to create this look a lot easier. This card features the slimline card base, the slimline pierced frame, along with the holy night die, and the rustic Christmas slimline paper pad. The dimensions for all these dies can be found on the product pages on our website. Now stick around as Kelly Holland shares with you additional samples using our Slimline die sets. Hi everybody, it's Kelly Holland here. I'm going to show you some of the Slimline cards. The next few cards feature our flower petal background. This one also includes our Thank You Jesus stamp die duo. Here's one cut out on Miracar. It's a shiny cardstock and it uses our America the Beautiful Slimline paper pad. This time it was cut out using Mirror Sparkle cardstock and our Slimline Beautiful Blooms paper, along with our Mr. and Mrs. die. Next, we have cards featuring our scalloped rectangles, along with our flower petal background. This card also features the Beautiful Blooms stamp die duo, the Butterfly Trio, and the Blessings Border. Here's one using our Slimline Beautiful Blooms paper, along with our Hello Friend Stamp Die Duo. Here's some scalps cut on on metallic paper, and our With Sympathy Stamp Die Duo. Now I have some scalped rectangle deck cards, along with the rectangles and layering rectangles. These are the retro ornaments and the Merry Christmas die. This card features our long and lean letters and our Bitty Blossoms flower dies. This card features our geometric paper pad along with the Birthday Blooms stamp die duo. Here we have the Butterfly Trio again with one of our tree tag dies. This one features the America the Beautiful Slimline Paper Pad, along with our USA Map and some of our star dies. These cards will feature our scalped rectangles, along with our Pierce window frame. This card also has additional dies from our April Blessings box, Here's an elephant from Bundle of Love, Stamp Die Duo. This is the cross stitch embossing folder. And we have pennants. These stamps are called Love You Very Much, and they also have dies in the set. Two cards that feature our Sprinkled with Love Stamp Die Duo. And this one features our long and lean letters and our large numbers. Our next cards will feature our pierced window frame. This one's a shaker and it uses the fish from Great Catch. Large letters along with pine cones and pine branches and our bow and our rustic Christmas paper pad in the world die. These stamps are from Flip Flap Fun Stamp Die Duo. Another one with the America the Beautiful paper pad. Thanks a bunch. Cute little monkey. Here's another shaker. And this is from Little Monsters. Another bundle of love with pennants. This is called Great Faith Stamp Die Duo. 
This is our raspberry stamp set. Some various stamps from different patriotic sets in the patriotic section, along with some star dies. This card features our curvy slopes, slimline dies, along with the Merry Christmas die, and the trees and deer dies. The card with our retro ornaments, rustic Christmas paper pad, and trees and deer, along with the curvy slopes. Here's our slimline clouds on top, along with our farm friend stamp set and our barn die. Here's a card that features the clouds also. This one has the curvy slopes and the clouds, along with the trees and the neighborhood border. These cards feature our rectangles and layering rectangles, slim lined eyes. This card has the Holy Night die. This card features the Rocket Man stamp die duo, along with our star dies. Long and lean letters. And here's a few cards showing the grasses, slim lined eye. Their baby set. This is the Hug Stamp Die Duo, along with different sets. Here we have Farm Friends, along with our Farm Fence Die. Thank you, Kelly, for sharing those fabulous card samples created by our design team. For more inspiration, visit our samples gallery, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Pinterest and Instagram. Hello, this is Sarah from The Paper Cut. I am here today to talk to you about Slimline Basics. So what are Slimline cards and what do we have that can help you get started making Slimline cards? Basically, a Slimline card is a card that once it's folded, it's three and a half wide by eight and a half tall. So our folded card is this size right here, three and a half by eight and a half. We have these as pre-scored cards in a variety of colors, including white, which I don't have here. Um, but we also have some other products that can help you get started making your slimline cards. For the inside of your card, we do have a text insert. So this is our text insert. It does come as a non-folded piece, so you're just folding it in half. Um, so you fold your slimline text insert in half. Now I've drawn the score on this card because I'm going to show you how I connect text inserts to the inside of a card. I usually put tape on either side of this score if I'm using a quarter inch tape. If I'm using a half inch tape, I just put tape right down the center. So many times people will put tape on the whole inside of their card. So they'll do tape all the way around and then they'll attach their text insert. And then when they go and fold it, they'll get buckling in this middle part. So by putting tape just on either side of the score and then attaching your text insert, that helps um, with no buckling. So hold your slimline card at a 90 degree angle, hold your text insert, and then set your text insert right up to that score, and then close your card. Then you have your text insert attached on either side of your score and kind of loose, but there isn't any buckling in the middle. So that's the inside of your slimline card. We also have the text inserts for A2 size cards too, which is probably the more standard size card that you're used to. So we have our slimline card, three and a half by eight and a half. Um, we also have envelopes to match. So this is your slimline envelope 
which is 3 and 7 eighths by 8 and 7 eighths. Now, in comparison, the slim line card is slightly smaller than your number 10 envelope or number 10 card, which we call that card a tower card. So you can see that our tower card is just slightly bigger than our slim line card. Our tower card also fits in a number 10 envelope, so there you see the difference in the envelope size. So you could use the number 10 envelope for your slimline card, but you're going to get a lot of moving around within that envelope. So it is much better to put your slimline card in a slimline envelope. If you want to sell your slimline cards, um, we do have slimline clear envelopes. So those clear envelopes will you protect your cards and your envelopes. Um, or if you just want to keep them just very nice for show, the crystal clear envelopes are very nice for that. So we have our slimline cards. Now to get started, what do we have that can help you with your slimline cards? We have our slimline layering swatches, which are three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So they fit on your slimline card with the slight border going all the way around. Other products that we have are our slimline overlays. So the slimline overlays either have three straight squares or three scallop squares. So those come in a variety of colors and the one package that's really nice is our bulk variety which has ten colors in it five of each color and that again is available in our straight square or our scallop square. The one thing that's nice about your um, overlays is that they are cut slightly smaller than our slimline layer. So our slimline layer is three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. The slimline overlays with the windows are cut slightly smaller so then you can get a double layered look. We have our slimline card, our slimline layer, and our slimline overlay. <clears throat> so without any work of cutting, you can have a nice um, double layered look on your slimline card. Now I'm also going to go through and show you how to use some of the stamps that you have in order to make slimline cards. So there are all kinds of dies out there and I think there's people coming out with stamps there's dies out there that are longer, which Rubbernecker has a whole assortment of them, and we're going to get to that later. But first, I'm going to show you how to use some of your products that you already have to get started on slimline cards. So you can use our pre-cut card bases and our pre-cut layers to get started, but then you also have your stamps that you can use. So I'm going to go through first, and we're going to start with just a simple colored look um, by doing some brush blending. So we have, hang on one second while I find that piece, oh here it is, okay. So we have a piece that's a layer and I'm just going to start with some brush blending. Um, for brush blending I like to hold my brushes and put my thumb behind the tip and use a circular motion to pick up some color, start off, and then blend down. Um, it'll be darker at the top, lighter at the bottom. Now I'm not going to do this whole thing um, because you don't need to watch me brush blend. You want to see more how to get the finished look. So I pre-did that both in my blue and my green. And now I'm going to use a stamp that I already have. So this stamp was meant for an A2 size card. And we can adapt this and connect it right here to make it fit all along our slimline card. So we're just going to do that. We're going to ink it up really well. Now with it being a more solid stamp on the bottom, you want to make sure and get plenty of ink down there. And you do have a straight line down here. So you don't have to get that straight line even with your layer. It's nice to take that straight line a little bit off the edge, but I'll show you what to do to correct that just in case 
you don't get it off the edge. <clears throat> so when you're stamping, if you're new to stamping, when you're using solid stamps like that, you just want to let the ink soak in from the rubber into the paper to get a good image and you want to go you know, straight pressure across it. You don't want to tilt it back and forth. So there we have our one image. Now you can see we can kind of connect our image right here. So we can use our A2 size um, stamp to make a slimline card. Okay, and again, now I'm just going to try and connect these two. I'm going to be off the bottom slightly. And it's okay that your stamps run off the top. That just, um, it doesn't look like, it looks like you meant to do it, rather than trying to be on with all of them. If some of them run off the sides, that's okay. So now down here, had we missed this edge, this is just a little trick. You can just take your ink pad and just kind of do a direct to paper if you missed that edge. I didn't miss that edge, but I'm just kind of showing you. If you miss an edge, you can always take and do direct to paper. So there we have an A2 size stamp that we were able to adapt and stamp it twice for a slimline card. So this is a finished card, which is a little bit lighter, but that's okay. I just wanted the darker so you could see it a little bit better with the contrast. So that's just using simple brush blending and a stamp for an A2 card to make our slimline card. So then next, we are gonna go on to stamping on one of our overlays. Now this one, is a little bit lighter, so I'm gonna take a stamp that's a little bit darker so you can see it a little bit better. Um, but this is with our A2 overlays, or not our A2, our slimline overlays. So we have our triple square overlay. Now when you're picking stamps, you wanna pick a stamp that's a, more of a random type stamp. So if you don't hit it exactly, like if I had a chevron or something right here, and I needed to line up my chevrons about right there, they wouldn't line up, or it would be very difficult. So if I take my more random, um, more distressed works really nice. Um, this one kind of looks like bricks, so I'm gonna do a little bit of orange on it, or a little bit of rust, and then I'm also gonna hit it with a little bit of red. I'm going to start very close. I'm going to stamp this way and it's going to end right in the middle between those two windows. So now I do need to connect it and I did miss a little bit of inking on there, but that's okay. Now, I know the edge of my um, image is in a little bit from the edge of my rubber, so I'm just going to look straight down on it and try and connect them as best as I can. But again, this is a very more distressed image, so it doesn't really matter. And if you miss your stamping, like if you missed inking, um, you can always take a blending brush and blend some color in that area. So again, I put my thumb behind the tip of my blending brush, start off the paper, and move it onto the paper. And I can kind of do that all over, so then it doesn't look like I actually had a mistake. So there's always a way to fix everything. If you're new to stamping and it's not perfect, it's okay. If it is perfect, it would be hallmark and yours is handmade, so it doesn't need to be perfect. And there's always a way to fix stuff, especially with blending brushes. So there we added color to our overlay, again, using an A2 size stamp, and you can hardly connect or tell where I connected my images.
So that's stamping on our overlays using background stamps. Now we are going to I'm going to show you one more. Let me find a clean area here. Um, this card has both stamping on it and die cutting. So again, we're just going to touch base on using our background stamps for stamping, and then I'll show you how to use some of your um, A2 card borders for die cutting. So again, this is um, a stamp from Rubbernecker. It is called, I think, Random Dots or Not So Random Dots. Not exactly sure what the name of it is, but anyways, I'm going to ink it up with white ink. I'm going to start fairly close to my image or my paper. I'm going to stamp it forward, pull it up. Now I need to stamp this section. Now I can either, with these random dots, it's really easy to kind of connect them the opposite way. So rather than last time when I started and I kind of looked at it that way, I can just kind of look at it this way because I can see where my image is starting versus where my image is on my paper. So I can just kind of rock that forward and if my dots overlap, that's okay. So again, you can hardly tell where my um, image starts and stops. Now for die cutting, so we're gonna, I'm gonna move some of this stuff, we're gonna bring the die cutter over and then we're gonna go over die cutting um, with the A2 dies. Okay, so we are using this die right here in order to make some snow hills. And I'm just going to die cut it once first. And this is just on our crystal diamond print glitter paper. And I'm going to run that through. Yesterday when I was using this, it was a little tight, so now I'm just going to loosen it up. This is the crossover machine. Um, it does have where you can adjust your um, pressure. That's this little dial up at the top. So if it's not cutting through, like we can see that cut through fine. If it's not cutting through, you can always adjust your um, pressure. Anyways, because we're using a die that again, with that deckled hills, it's very easy to connect those. If I was doing a straight, really smooth line, sometimes it's a little bit harder. But because we have just the snow hills that are with a deckle edge, we have a little bit of leeway there where we're not going to see where we connect them. So again, die cut that. So here's our hill border, which again, with the dies that are more kind of a random pattern with the decal, it's really easy. You can't tell where I connected that. So again, using an A2 size die to make a border. Um, there are dies out there that cut all the way across, but if you're just getting started or want to use some supplies that you already have, um, it's really easy to connect some dies. So that's how we made that card. And now with making this one. So the trees, again, the trees are for an A2 size card. And they actually look like this. And we're going to die cut them twice. So the metal plate that you might be seeing that is not made by any of the die cutting machines. I just developed that because I do a ton of die cutting and it was helping when I'm using more detailed dies. Um, this size right here is the smaller size for a big shot. I do have one for the crossover that's a little bit bigger, um, but it helps die cut when you have really detailed dies. So now I'm gonna take this off 
and I'm going to just attach my trees fairly close. Now I am going to have a little bit where it's going to cut slightly into the previous image. I'm going to set that right up here. Um, so now I'm going to die cut it one more time. So you can just think outside the box and use some of the supplies you have in order to make your slimline cards. Again, there's lots of dies out there for slimlines, and some of them are really cool, but if you don't want to invest in all the different dies and everything else, you can work with some of what you have. So this one, after you punch it out, you will have this border right here, and you can see it connects just slightly, um, but you don't hardly notice that on our finished card, which I sprayed our trees with a gold spray, spray glitter. So the other piece that I have on there is this layer. Um, this is one of Rubbernecker's dies. Now their dies fit on our three and a quarter by eight and a quarter layers. So I used that to cut my grocer craft layer. I used our jelly bean green layering swatch, which the jelly bean green is part of our new set of layering swatches. So these are our harvest color layering swatches, which these are new on our website right now, along with a couple other sets. We have our vintage Christmas set, which is your classic red linen, your emerald green linen, and your cream linen. And then we also have our holiday set, which is a red, white, and gumdrop green. Anyways, so I used their dye to cut my top layer. I used our layer of layering swatch as the jelly bean green. And then the layer in between, I added some of our brushed gold mirror card. Um, that one I cut as an in-between layer. So the in-between layer size would be your three and an eighth by eight and an eighth. So I just want to show you with um, their dies. Again, here's another one of their dies. It's actually two of them. So it is their postage stamp die and then a diagonal stripe die that we used a lot. So we attached together with just some removable tape. Um, but it fits nicely on our um, three and a quarter by eight and a quarter layering swatch. And You'll have two pieces when you are done with this. I'm just going to show you that, how you can use both pieces from die cutting this. I think I'm still a little bit tight on my die cutting machine because I'm getting a little thudding there. And I also think it's because I'm using a smaller plate. My big plate is up in the front of our shop with um, one of my other machines. So I just have one of the smaller ones. So anyways, we have the cutout piece which you can use, or the board, the outside, and then we also have our inside piece. So when that one was cut out, after it's all punched out, you get those two pieces. And you can layer that. So again, you have our slimline card, you have our three and a quarter by eight and a quarter layer, which is what we used, and then you can layer this on top of there, which gives a nice double layered look. Or you can put your cutout piece on there as a border, and then you could stamp inside here. So by using the layering swatches that are three and a quarter by eight and a quarter, and then die cutting, you get both pieces that can layer on your slimline card. So let's go through and show, oh, I've got one more border technique to show you. So we do have some border dies that just cut the border. And if you take and you line them up at the very top edge of a, just a piece of scrap paper, now we do have some 2x12s on our website that these would be perfect for making borders on your slimline cards. 
and they connect together really easily. And I'm going to show you how to connect it. Okay, so we're just going to pull that off. I'm just going to rip the scrap off of there. And then I'm going to poke out that bottom hole. Now, there is the bottom hole right here, which you're going to just place in that hole and kind of hold it in place. I'm using removable tape to hold my dies in place. And then I'm going to run that through. So now we have our border, and you can't even connect, tell where I connected that die. To make a slimline border, again, out of a die that is five and three quarters long, meant for an A2 size card, you can connect it to make a border for your slimline cards. So now I'm just going to go through and show you some of our cards and different pieces that I've used. So again, we have our tree border. We have our snowflake one that I already showed you. Now this is using our silver Miri Sparkle and silver mirror card and our diamond print glitter paper. Then we have, this is one of our new colors of our overlays, it's our forest green. And I've used poinsettias um, in multiple colors. Um, and then our background is our brushed gold mirror card, but that one's really pretty, really easy. Again, using our um, straight square overlay. And I stamped the background here just with a tree stamp and then just put some simple die cuts on it. Using that same color overlay to make an autumn card. Um, again, this one I backed with our brushed gold mirror card, used some of our metallic papers to die cut some leaves. Our butterfly card, um, which I used our scallop overlay. Here's using our red um, triple square overlay. Now this one is very similar to one of our Christmas card kits. So this one with the sour apple overlay is our gnome Christmas card kit that's available on our website on under Christmas card kits. But this one I just took the opposite and the red I used some um, silver alcohol ink and I just kind of splattered it on there. Um, so this is just the opposite combination to make that cute Christmas card. This one, a shaker card. This one is one of Rubber Necker's triple window dies um, and some monsters from Impression Obsession and I used it to make our shaker card. Now, the next segment of the Stampin' Scrapbook Expo at home on September 1st, their mini edition, is slimline cards and I'm gonna be showing you how to make a shaker card using our triple um, window overlays and our slimline card layers. So catch me on September 1st for that. It might not be this Halloween one, it might be a winter one, I'm not sure, I haven't designed it yet, but I will be showing you how to make a shaker card using our overlays. A couple more cards. You have this one that is again using the rubber necker dies um, and our metallic papers. And then one more, we have this one, a red slimline card. Now when you're doing vertical, you can always separate it using some type of divider. So this is using our word layering die set for the little scallop border there. This is one of our Christmas card kits also, Scribble Tree. Um, but when you're doing vertical, if you have a stamp or a piece of pattern paper that doesn't cover your whole whole card, that's a way to cover it up, is just create a divider there and create two sections of the card. So you don't always have to go all the way across the card. 
you can create dividers there. Um, so that's what I have for you today with sharing um, our slimline products and some just different techniques for doing slimline cards. Be sure to join me on September 1st where I will be showing you how to make a shaker card with the slimline cards and I will also be showing you how to make a waterfall card on a slimline card. We will see you then. Thanks. Well, welcome to our Rubbernecker's descriptions of slim lines. We're going to start out this discussion by talking about the size of slim line cards. There are a lot of, lot of different ones out there. Um, basic size, eight and a half by three and a half or three and a half by eight and a half. But there are also slim line cards made four by nine and three and three quarter by eight and three quarters. So when making our dies, we had to make a choice of what we wanted to do. And we think that the eight and a half by three and a half complete outside is the format we wanted to use. And so we made our dies a net three by eight. And that seems to fit within all the other outside dimensions. So we see, we felt like that was the one that would be most appropriate. But there was another deciding factor that we wanted to make sure that we could do, and that was to make sure that this die, the three inch by eight inch die, would fit on most people's machines. So we looked around and we decided that there's a lot of machines and we said that maybe Sizzix has got the most of them. So we went with the Big Shot and we looked at the, the, the plate that comes with the Big Shot and they're eight and a half inches long. Unfortunately, they taper just ever so slightly in the last quarter of an inch on each side. So you have just a fraction over eight inches to get this die on. So let me put the die on this plate here and show it to you. See, it, it just fits inside the tapers. So if you're working with a die that's longer than that, you're going to have a problem with that. So we want to make sure that our dies did that. Now, this is the machine that we use. We use the crossover. Um, it comes to us from the people that make our dies out of Phoenix, and it's got an eight and a half by 11 inch platen. Um, and so you can see how much larger it is. So we don't have a problem with ours, but everybody doesn't have this one. So um, we wanted to make sure that it would work just fine for everybody. So that's what we went with. Now here's an example of a basic slimline card. This is in a vertical or portrait format. And our die cut out the white portion of this and that's three by eight. And then the green piece is three and a half by eight and a half. And we stuck in some gnomes and put in a phrase and it gives a nice feel to it. You know, you can get the, a nice back and forth composition as you visually move up the card and it works well. It also works nicely in a horizontal format and you could have the dies turned and peeking out that way just as well. So a lot of flexibility in this particular die. And we thought this was a nice little gnomes kind of saying Merry Christmas. We also used some of our Christmas bouquet die set, stamp set in this one. Now, I think what would be a good thing to do now is to actually cut out some of the pieces. So. Uh, we've got our crossover machine out now, and we're going to cut a couple of the dies so you can see how easily they cut.
Now that one I cut straight on or perpendicular to the cutting surface. And this one I'm going to cut at an angle. And it cuts easier on these big machines if you can angle that in and have it right up on a corner of your die versus running up against the square edge of your die. You'll find that if you've got the room in your plate and to turn your die just a little bit, it's much easier on your machine and it's much easier on your ears for the, the noise that it creates. So I would recommend that completely. So now let's go over a few of the different die cut patterns that we've created. So these are called full cuts in my mind. We're cutting the outside and the inside with one die. And most people's dies, this is what they do. They either cut an outline and leave a solid piece of paper in the middle, or they cut out the pattern at the same time. And we thought that was a great idea and we wanted to make some like that. So you can see a number of ours that are cut out. These are outlined eyes. They, for me, that means they cut out the outline of the piece of paper, but they don't cut anything out of the middle. But then we decided that you might want something out of the middle. So we created another die that's called an insert die. And we'll get to that in just a second. That's the last, that's a nested set. And this one is, we call a one piece combined because it cuts out a piece out of the middle and the inside at the same time. But let's go back to this one. So we've got an outline die that we've cut out, and then we've added another die to the middle of it. And so these are examples of what I call insert dies, or slimline inserts is what the package is called. And they can be, they can be placed with any of our outline dies. So if you've got three of the outline dies and three of the insert dies, that's three times three, you got nine different combinations that you can have there. So if you have 10 outline dies and 10 insert dies, that's a potential combination of over 100 different combinations you could make. The inside dies are smaller, so they're less expensive. So it's an economical way to do things without having to buy every pattern in every shape you can have a lot of flexibility and save a lot of money at the same time. So now we've got an example. This is a full cut die. We're going to cut out the outside and the inside all at once. And we found it was really interesting if you cut these out, that they work nice as a background for things, as you can see. Nice contrast. You could cut it out out of another piece of material and lay some material back into those slots that are different colors for accent. Or you could do this, cut two pieces out and layer them by flipping it over and you've got a pretty lattice work. So here we've got a little harvest gold coloring going on. And I'm gonna take those and lay those down on something else here. Uh, here's a nice rust, uh, very fall feel. Golds and reds, yellows of autumn. Let's take the yellow and green and we'll composite those again. Now let's grab a piece of purple. I always think of these colors, I think of friendly Halloween. No blacks, but just friendly colors. But still a little spooky. So here's a card we made using that combination of three colors. We used a Happy Halloween stamp and a three of our die cuts. Some friendly ghosts, a little spooky tree, and some witches. And it came out like this. The slim lines are really cool because you can tell a story going up. It's not just 
you're not limited on so much on a four and a quarter by five and a half format. Here are the dies packaging for you. Now let's cut some of the outline dies included with the insert so you can see how we do that. So this is kind of boring here, so we are gonna move along pretty quick here. Tape down the outline, put in the inside, just line it up visually. You can get it pretty close that way. You can use a ruler if you want, but for the most part, you just have to get it visually attached and run it through. Pop out all our holes. There. So that's our scalloped circle with eyelets matched to our uh, scallop frame. Or we could put the diagonals in, or we could put the circles. Or we could put the ovals in. So the flexibility is up to your imagination. Now we're going to run this through on a nice piece of bright yellow orange cardstock with the insert in it. And it's probably not a point that needs to be made, but I'm going to make it anyway. cut this out of a couple different colors and you just fit them right back inside and so it's kind of a mixy matchy kind of thing and lots of fun now we're we've got some gift card holders here that have been we took it and we used our our uh, scallop frame we just folded it over once. And you can fold it even or you can fold it uneven. And if you fold it uneven, then the card will kind of stick out the top uh, rather than being tucked all the way inside. So however you'd want to do this. And we just took some yarn and, and a darning needle and stitched it up. This one was done with ribbon and they were just little fun little Fun little things. So now I'm going to show you that we, it's always nice to match die cutting. So we, we've got a card here. Kitty made this one and it's a camping scene as you can see, but she was really great because it's frameless. So we matched the die cut on the grass at the bottom to the die cut for the overall frame. And so we cut out the frame and then we cut out two more of the frames in green and then used our deckled edge that you can see in the upper left hand corner there um, to cut these pieces out so that they match along the bottom and on the left side for this one. And they're only, they're not made to go all the way across. They're only six inch dies, um, but they work great on slim lines because it lets you just simply get a, re, a, a relief in between so that you can slip something or you can pop them up and you get some dimensionality and you're not having to take something and cut something. It, it's just a piece that you can make work. And there are a lot of different dies out there that will stretch across the eight inches in multiple pieces. So now I'm going to go back to that same frame that we've been using uh, and I'm going to cut it again and I'm going to show you one more card that we're going to make today. 
And this one comes to me from one of our ladies that, that does fabulous work for us, and her name is Pretty Chandran. And she created a nice little card by folding this guy. And so this one's got all the holes in it. Let me grab one here. There we go. We got one that's doesn't have the holes in it anymore. And I'm just going to do it again, folding it in half. Um, it is best if you score this, not scratching it with your fingernail. But um, and so I've got a flip phone. And so here's one that we've got started. So I took another piece of paper and I tucked it on the inside of this. And I glued the card to it, glued the, the slimline frame to it. And I've got a couple pieces of paper on the top there. On the inside, I pre-stamped a flower and a little greeting. And so now I've stamped this from our flowering vine set, 3312. And I'm gonna die cut out all those flowers and leaves. And that's what I'm gonna to use to create the front of the card. And I just glued them and stacked them on there and used the green as a base. And now you can see that the blue background was a bit of the sky. And I just layered them up put a little phrase on it and then thanks so much you're just blooming amazing it's just another way that you can use slimline dyes uh, to do something that isn't necessarily slimline now let me show you some of the other cards that have been made um, certainly not by me but by our talented team these come to a, come these first three come to me from Annie Williams and that's using the the bubble scallop frame and I think that's 3303 our flowered set and here she's used one of our new flowers I think that's 3319 or 3320 I guess and it's got the deckled frame around it she did a wonderful job coloring up the background using um, Oh, markers. I can't remember the name. And finally, Annie's last one, and she's used the postage stamp. Very simple, very dramatic. Missing you. And now most of these final ones are going to be from Kitty. Um, Kitty Caraziolo, she's used a deckle frame and she used a wonky insert frame here to cut out some holes and our new beach dies. Here again is the bubbled scallop frame along with the oval and dots insert. I know we're all thinking of fall and Christmas already, but um, there's still some summertime left. Kitty's got a nice beach theme going on. This one's done with the full cut circle with dots and stitches. And she did it twice and put the red dots from one cut back into the other one. And here's the diagonal, kind of, it's kind of an interesting feel behind the, the lighthouse. Back to the beach again with the postage stamp. Back to the beach one more time with the, the bubbled scallops frame. And the camping set I showed you earlier, that's done with the deckled edge.
springtime has got the two one piece combined. And again, bees in the garden, very springy. The Halloween card I showed you earlier with the diagonal one piece combined. Full cut frame, as I call it. The gnome card for Christmas with our wavy one piece combined. Kitty with a beautiful poinsettia card with a postage stamp edge and the rounded corner insert. And our cute little train all dressed up for Christmas with a diagonal insert piece a version of the Polar Express. We've got the pine tree forest, and this is using our nested dash set, stitch set. Can't quite see it. There's a fluttering of snow on the trees. And then finally, back to the gift card holders. And the scallop slimline frame. And the bubble scallop. And we also made our flower card with that, once again, designed by Pretty. That's it for us. Thanks for watching. Hi, Paper Crafters. I'm Trisha Morris coming to you from the Club Scrap Warehouse based in Nina, Wisconsin. Welcome to the Stampin' Scrapbook Expo at Home mini event focusing on slim line cards. I haven't really been focusing on slim anything except cards these days. I don't know about you, but the card that I'm going to be teaching you how to make today is so neat because you don't, it doesn't require any additional supplies other than 12 by 12 paper. I'm hoping you have some 12 by 12 paper on hand. But what you're going to learn today is sort of my approach to all of my paper crafting and card making. Let's do it as efficiently as possible. Now the inspiration for today's card, cards I should say, comes from a book structure that I learned how to make many years ago, probably about 20 years ago, called a flag book. So I've taken that concept and transferred it over into a formula that transforms 12 sheets of paper into two slimline cards. And when you open the card, all of these fun little flags pop up. Well, how about we get started? So here are two completed examples of the cards that I've made. The first pair was created with Club Scraps Vintage Americana collection. But again, as I mentioned before, you can do this card with anything that you have in your stash. Um, and then all of the surfaces of these flags give you tons of opportunities to do some stamping and other kinds of decorating and embellishments. And again, if you follow the formula that I'm about to share with you, you'll make two at a time because I figure if you're making one, you might as well make another. So after testing the formula, I made some tweaks and then I made another pair of cards with Club Scraps Prism Collection. This was released in July, in July of this year. So I had a lot of fun with this prism style, um, shining bright, being colorful. You rock. 
these are these are fun. These were made with um, cut aparts that were adapted from uh, things that would have been used for for pages and cards. So really had a good time making this pair. And then as a result of making these, I made some more adaptations to the formula. So here is the formula that you'll be able to download. I'll give you a link um, that you'll be able to access this to print it for yourself so that you can use the formula again and again. And um, after I make the set of cards, those will be pictured on this so you can remember what this formula makes. And I'm calling them slimline flag cards. And at the beginning of the formula, it tells us what we need to gather. Now, if you are just following along here and watching this for the very first time, I want to encourage you to just sit back, relax, and see how it all goes down. Once you've viewed this video, you'll be able to go back and watch it again and again so that you can have a better understanding of how these cards come together and you'll be able to follow along much more easily because you'll know exactly where we're going. All right, so I've got a series of trimming diagrams here. So the first thing you'll need to gather is paper to trim. And notice again, it's all 12 by 12. And then you also need two number nine envelopes. So I need uh, five sheets total, A, B, C, and D. I'm recommending that you find a print from your stash. And then paper E should be a light color. So I took Club Scrap's Beautiful Noise Kit and I chose A and B. And those should be different colors, not the same. And then I have a print for paper C, a different print for paper D, and a light colored sheet for paper E. So again, assuming that you have paper at home, you can grab your paper from your stash and just think in terms of two different planes, two prints, and then a light color for stamping and decorating. Once we have our paper, the next step will be to trim it in a very, very specific way. For my trimming, I'm using a Fiskars guillotine style trimmer. What's really important about your trimmer is that you're able to use it to measure because measuring will make this all work. So um, th this particular trimmer base has these vertical columns every quarter inch. So be sure you're able to measure a full 12 inches no matter what kind of trimmer you happen to have. Now, if you're a card maker, there's something really important you need to know about paper. If you don't already know it, paper has a grain. And since we're starting with a 12 by 12 sheet of paper, I can control the way the grain is on this paper by checking it first. Um, if you've ever folded a piece of paper against the grain, that would be this direction, um, it sometimes can create a very crumpled, uh, unattractive fold. If you fold the paper with the grain, it's very, very nice looking in a straight fold. The same is true even when you tear a piece of paper in half. If you're tearing with the grain, it naturally forms a somewhat straight line. If you tear against the grain, it's a very jagged tear. Sometimes you want that. So how do you determine the grain direction of your paper? Well, you hold it by the middle of one edge and you study the behavior of the paper. Now in this case, my paper is extremely stiff and inflexible. Then turn it one turn, so this is a neighboring edge, hold that, and see how the paper just wants to fold downward. It wants to bend. In my instructions, do you see in the sketch of this formula here, there's a little arrow on the sketch and the arrow points top to bottom. So that means I want the grain, the paper to dip easily in that direction because it will help me later when I go to score and fold this paper into my slim, my slim line card. All right, so let's go ahead and take um, this paper A. And since we're trimming paper B in the same way, I'm going to take that one as well and check the grain direction and make sure it's dipping easily top to bottom. I'm going to go ahead and cut both of these papers at the same time. Now, if you're not comfortable in doing that, by all means, go back and trim the second sheet at a different time. You don't have to do them both at the same time, but it's a really efficient way to do this and I'm all about efficiency. So let's find 11 and a half for our first cut. And on the trimmer like this, you find the whole number 11 and you go to the left two vertical columns that makes, so this is 11, 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half. And here I am. Now what you need to do next is stabilize on the clear bar to prevent the two sheets of paper from buckling when you bring the blade down. And then I'm going to slide the paper down to eight and a half. And I, by that I mean both papers to eight and a half. And then let's rotate the paper in the trimmer. Papers, plural, in the trimmer. And we're going to trim at ten. Now these two pieces are going to grow up to become the basis of our card. They need to be scored, so I'm going to set those aside to be scored. And I'm sorry to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that these pieces are not used necessarily in these cards. I'll set those aside in a different pile. 
Next I have this 3 by 12 inch strip remaining, so I'm going to make a couple of cuts on this, and I have both pieces A and B, and I'll cut at 10 and a half and 8. Now these are going to become slimline panels, so these will nest on the inside of your cards. Then you have some smaller panels for your flags, and then you have these tiny rectangles. Those go in the scrap pile with the others. You also have these narrow pieces. You can set those aside as scraps as well. So we've done all the trimming required for this first papers A and B. Now I'll turn to the sketch for C and D. These are the prints. And the grain direction does not matter for the prints because they're not going to be folded. So whenever you're, you're folding paper is when grain direction matters. But again, even these prints, they do have a grain. It's running this way. But again, it doesn't really matter how you uh, put this one into the trimmer. All right, so let's cut at nine and three quarters. And I'm doing both at the same time. So there are two prints, both being cut at the same time. Nine and three quarters. <laughs> six and a half and three and a quarter. Now I'm going to rotate the, the three and a quarter by 12 that's in the trimmer base right now, both sheets. I'll make two cuts. The first one is at 11 and then eight and a quarter. So eight plus one column to the left, that's eight and a quarter. I just made two really beautiful panels that will end up being on the front of our card. So these are the slimline front panels. I'll put those with my other panels. And then I have two others. And look, these will be nesting on these maybe. We'll see how these turn out. So I'm going to make another little pile for that. And two little scraps have been formed here. Now I have another pair of strips. These are three and a quarter by 12 also. And we're going to trim these into a bunch of panels. So these are going to become the flags. So we'll cut at 11, 8 and a quarter, 5 and a half, and 2 and 3 quarters. We just made a whole bunch of panels. I think these might be the same size as these. Okay, we're going to make a whole st stack. All right, we're going to do that again. So let's take the next three and a quarter by 12, the same thing, 11, eight and a quarter, five and a half, two and three quarters. If I stack up all those pieces, they're all the same size. Isn't that awesome? And I'm going to put them again with my pile of all the flags. This is going to be enough flags for two books. Okay, there are some one inch scraps we're going to set aside. I ended up using those one inch scraps on the front of this card to stamp on. I just took the back of the scrap and trimmed it and placed it right into that spot. So we can use these scraps. Now we have one more little strip. Let's trim this narrow, narrow one. This is two and a quarter by 12. We'll trim this at 11 and three quarters, nine and a half, seven and a quarter, five, and two and three quarters. All right, now I want you to check this out. Do you see these two pieces we made earlier? The two pieces we just made nest onto those perfectly, and that's what ends up on the front of your card. So I'm always showing you something in a different theme or different style just to show you, you know, where we're headed, but isn't it cool how these nest so beautifully the print right on top of the plane that'll end up on the front of your book. Then you also made a whole bunch of little squares, and let me show you how those turned out. On the backs of some of your flag pages, there's a smaller area on which you can put the print to add a little bit of a decorative element. So these squares are going to go on their very own little pile. I'm making all kinds of piles here. And then I'll get rid of the little tiny scraps. Last but not least is the paper that we plan to use for stamping or, and decorating. So I chose a light color, so if you choose to stamp, you have a good stamping surface. Let's trim this one sheet at ten and a quarter. <laughs> seven and three quarters, five and a quarter, and two and three quarters. 
Take the piece that's currently in the base of your trimmer, rotate, we'll cut at 11 and 7 and 3 quarters. Now you just made another slim line panel, and look, this one even fits to nest on those. Uh, we won't be doing that, but it, it would. And then this guy is the same size as all of our other panels. Now, I've got three strips that we just created that are all the same size. Let's trim them all at nine, six, and three. Okay, so what that gave me is a whole bunch of rectangles that are all the same size, and if you'll notice, they are the perfect size to nest onto our flags. Now, if I had told you that you needed to make 18 of uh, two and a half by three inch panels, you might have just rolled your eyes and walked away. But instead, I'm showing you how to make 18 two and a half by three inch panels in the most efficient way possible. And that's what I'm all about. Okay, we also did create a couple of scraps, this little one and then this long strip. So I'll set those aside. And since we're finished with all of our trimming for now, we'll set this aside as well and grab our score pal. Now earlier, when you determine the grain direction of the paper, it's going to dip easily in the direction that we plan to uh, fold it. But also when you're using a score pal, it's important to remember that when you want to make an accordion style fold, that we alternate our score lines so that you have bumps and divots alternating so that you have the best fold possible. So I'm gonna show you a little trick. I'll give you the numbers, we'll score at three and a half. And by the way, this is with the paper in there horizontally, so that the 10 should be at the top. Three and a half, score again at four and a half, five and a half, and six and a half. All right, now take the paper and flip it. So you bring the bottom of the paper up to the top. That's an important step. Now we're gonna score in between each of these lines. So we'll score at four, five, and six. Then I'll set aside this piece and grab the other burgundy color, again, horizontally into the score pal, so the 10 is up here. We'll score at three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half. Important step, flip the paper bottom to top, and then score on the even numbers, four, five, and six. Okay, done with the score pal. Now I'm ready to make my actual slimline card with a very, very special accordion spine. So again, the anatomy of a fold is that every fold has a bump and a divot. And do you see how the bumps and the divots are alternating? Well, the rule of thumb when you're folding a card is that the bump of the score gets buried on the inside of the fold. So that's a good way for you to remember, bury the bump. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a fold right here on that first score line that is a bump. And if yours wasn't a bump, then flip the paper over to make it a bump, and I'm going to just crease it with my fingertip. Okay, now next, this fold, or this score, is a divot, so I need to bury that one the other direction. So now I have a valley fold and a mountain. This one needs to be buried on the inside of a fold. And then the next one is a divot, so I need to fold it in the other direction. So this is again called an accordion fold. Here, I'm gonna bury that. And I'm making pleats, bury the next one. And then here's the bump, so bury that inside the fold. So what I just made here is a series of three beautiful pleats, one, two, three, to form what will become the accordion of my flag, slimline flag card. Isn't that fun? Now here's another way that I do it and um, again all you need to do is just bury all these bumps and you'll have the perfect accordion but here's my first bump so I'm going to fold that in. Okay then I'm just going to squeeze to get the next one buried and make my first pleat. So squeeze to bring the next one up and make another pleat. It really helps if you can use the edge of the table, but my camera isn't going that far, so I'm just kind of squeeze. And now I have these three gorgeous accordion folded pleats. Look at that. 
one, two, three. The finish size right now, if the card is closed, is exactly three and a half by eight and a half, which will fit perfectly inside a number nine envelope. Awesome. Okay. So now we basically have all the parts and pieces we need to complete our cards. I'm going to go ahead and assemble one so that you can kind of understand how the, what the next steps are. But basically you can interchange the colors. So for example, on the front of this card, if I wanted to, I could add, say, this print. And on this one, I'll add this print. Then on the inside, the right side of the card, I'm going to have you put the contrasting color of matte and that should nest in there perfectly and then the inside of the other one goes the other contrasting matte and that will be on the inside back then we have this additional light colored piece thinking that you know in some cases you may still have a paper that you use for a or b that's a little on the dark side this matte will nest perfectly onto the darker ones to give you a good stamping and writing surface or like a liner on the inside of your card as well then you have your decorative elements. So I think I'm going to take this nested piece that I showed you how it nests earlier. It goes this way, actually. And I'm going to center that in the end on the front of this card. And then this one, I'm interchanging the colors. So I've got the blue card base. I'm going to do the burgundy matte. And that's going to be situated right there on the front of my card. Isn't that cool? Then, basically, it's a dealing game. So. What I have next are all the flag pages. So if I just go uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine flags get dealt out to this card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine flags to this card. Here's a spare if I want it. Now what you could use the spare for might be to stamp on and add something to the back panel. However you decide you want to use it, it's just always good to have spare. And then I'm also going to deal out these smaller pieces. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So I just split those up between the two cards. And now pretty much everything in th that pile has been distributed. Next, these are the pieces that you can um, stamp on. So one, two, I'll just split them. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Look at, I've dealt out all of this stuff and now I can get assembling and creating. Isn't that fun? So I'll set aside everything needed for one card and we're going to put this one together. So the first thing I can do, and you don't have to adhere anything right out of the gates. You can just see the end result. I think the more important thing is the way the card is actually structured. So with um, my just standard two-way adhesive, I'll nest these panels. And add some adhesive to this. Later, if you want to go back, you could add ribbon or whatever and center this onto the front panel of my card base. Lovely. Okay, now when we open this, we again have the option to install. We don't have to install them, but I'm going to right now, just so you can see how this completely finishes. Center that. And then this fits beautifully on the inside with equal margin on all four edges. So nice. Okay, now let's talk about these flags. This is kind of important. So I'm going to go ahead and build myself three columns and three rows by dealing out these pieces. So one, two, three, and I want to arrange them to kind of what I'm looking for. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those are the nine flags, and I'm not sure if you can see them all, but these are the nine flags that I'm going to be installing into my book, and this is the way I want them to be installed. So you can just like study and make sure everything is looking the way you want it to look. Some of the, some of the things that you install will have a lot more contrast, as I had in my first two books. These, these prints looked relatively similar, but you can kind of tell that some are different. I'm going to set those aside for now and just study how this accordion is structured. So every pleat, one two, three, has a front side and a back side. And what I want to do is be very conscious of where I ad attach my flags. So for my first top row of flags, I'm going to start on the third pleat. So one, 
two, three, and I'm going to adhere the flag to the front of the pleat. To do that, I'm going to be using Club Scraps bookbinding glue and a needle tip applicator. I like the idea of using a liquid adhesive to give me a little bit of adjustment time. And I'm going to take the flag that I had put into the upper right corner of my little grid, the upper right corner flag, and I'll apply adhesive to the back of the flag. And then I'm going to place it on top of the front of the third pleat. And if you want to leave just a tiny a margin at the top, that's fine. You don't want your flags peeking out beyond the edge of your card. Then I'm going to take the next piece in the top row, apply my adhesive to the back of it, and place it on top of this front of the second pleat. Finally, a little adhesive on the back of the flag in the first column of the first row and add this to the front of the first pleat. So pleat one has a flag, pleat two, pleat three. I hope that makes a lot of sense to you. I really, really do. Now we're going to repeat the same action, installing the bottom three pieces into our book. Or it's not a book, it's a card. <laughs> it's an uber fancy card. So adhesive goes on the back, installs on the bottom edge on the front of the third pleat and I just started the back because it's just a little easier to install these from the back to the front because then you can align them. Now I'm installing on the front edge of the second pleat and then lastly on the front edge of the first. I know that's repetitive but if you're not paying attention you can screw this up. Uh, don't ask me how I know this. I just know this. Already, this card is starting to be kind of interesting, isn't it? Okay, remember how I said you have to do it on the front side of the pleat for the top row, front side of the pleat for the second uh, pleat rather for the second row. Now I'm going to have you install them on the back side of the pleats from front to back. So if you want the print facing the the front, you have to put your adhesive on the front. If you want your print facing the back, you can put your adhesive on the back. So it, it just kind of depends on what you're after. I'm going to go ahead and put my adhesive on the front face of this flag, and I'm going to place it on the back of the third pleat. Give that just a second to secure itself. So let's look at the difference now on this back pleat. Those first two flags are on the front side, and this one's on the back side. And that's going to help produce a really cool effect in just a minute. Then, again, remind yourself, put your adhesive on the front of the print, and slide that behind the second pleat. And lastly, adhesive, oops, I almost did it! I put my adhesive on the plain side, I'm going to put it on the printed side. And now I can install that right there on the back of the first pleat. Okay, so we kind of built the book from the back to the front. Now here's something cool that happens. I'm just going to close this and burnish a little bit. When you open the card and you pull outward, that's what happens. So if you had a print facing up that way, it would look kind of cool as well. But I just kind of liked them all. Isn't that fun? And when this card stands up, it can stand up like that. It's going to look awesome. Isn't that neat? So basically, your card is now a blank-ish canvas for your decorating enjoyment. So for decoration, these are the panels that we were left with after we distributed them left and right you know, to both of those cards. So if I stamped on this, maybe I could put a sentiment on this one on the front so I'm just going to go ahead and install this just to give you an idea of how these panels nest so beautifully onto the card. And then they're introducing a third color as well, adding some contrast. Now if I turn one pleat over to the back side, do you see how this panel is a little shorter because of the existence of the pleat? What I can do if I want is center one of those squares in that spot just to give it a little decorative element. Now there won't be a small square for every single 
piece, but that's okay. You could do one up here on this one and maybe down at the bottom on the next pleat, just add it there. And maybe another one in the back of the card. You could also stamp on these if you wanted to. The world is your oyster. Okay, then, oh, I still have one more. Okay, so I can maybe do this on the back so that I have a lot of interest on the back side where your, your major note and sentiment would be added. Okay, and then I still have one, two, three, four. So maybe I'll add a stamped panel to the back of this larger piece on the reverse side to add some color. How about one right here? And maybe we can still add one there. Okay, we still have one more blue. I think I'll add it to this one. Now every single piece allocated for this card has been installed. All that's left is to add our greetings and sentiments. For that, I'm going to be using stamps from this particular set. So every month at Club Scrap, we design a collection, and that has coordinating rubber stamps. So these are the stamps from the Beautiful Noise Kit. I keep mine in a hubless um, DVD case. So I'll be going through and stamping these elements onto the panels and then adding them back to the cards. I normally wouldn't have installed them without stamping on them first because I want to be able to have lots of freedom for when I stamp, but I just... What I really wanted was for you to see how the book comes together completely before it's even decorated. And again, you'll want to add your sentiments and greetings to these light blue shades or even all of them before you install them into the book. But here basically it's all completely assembled. And the other one again, the second one has everything you need to make one just like it with the same number of components and the same results. And again, with that accordion spine, this interactive element is really fun, plus the advantage of the fact that this fits all into this envelope. Now, a fair warning, it may require a little bit of extra postage or perhaps hand delivery if you have the opportunity to deliver this by hand, by all means, because I think you want to be around for when this is opened. So it's getting late. I'm going to go home and I'm going to come back to work tomorrow and gild the lily a little bit and I'll show you my completed cards. I'll see you soon. Hey everybody, I'm back again at Club Scrap with my completed slimline flag cards. I've made them both happy birthday cards because that would be the most common occasion we'd want to celebrate. And one of them I chose to decorate with the rubber stamps, as I'd mentioned. And the one that I already went ahead and assembled with you live on camera, I used um, something that we carry here at Club Scrap that accompany both of our page kits and card kits. These are printed cut-aparts. And other vendors manufacture these as well. And this is probably a great solution if you don't happen to enjoy rubber stamping. Um, I was able to really make some cool uh, decorative components for this card so I'm glad you're in my life is just right from those card kit cut aparts and then I was able to add some border strips and retrofit some of the longer shaped quotes that are de generally designed for pages to fit them right onto these smaller panels so every side pretty much of every flag in this book has a decorative element that really makes this a fun card plus I just hate a little bit of an area here in the back to write a personal note to the lucky recipient of this beauty and then I also spent a little bit of time with my stamps as I'd mentioned again with the kits we we have stamps as well that coordinate so this is a beautiful noise kit and uh, the ha right down to the happy birthday and every single element then that I used to decorate the inside of this came from that set of coordinating stamps and of course a mix of colors so whatever strikes your fancy if you're not a stamper this cut apart de decor is a great option or if you're a stamper again as I've mentioned before the world is your oyster so these two cards I made along with you with that beautiful noise kit and don't forget that you can just substitute out with papers from your stash in my stash I had these papers from the vintage Americana collection more of a patriotic theme and I love how those turn out with my rubber stamps and again the uh, prism collection as well I didn't use the stamps to, for these. I used my cut aparts to really make some fun uh, decorative elements for these as well. 
Well, there you have it, the slimline flag card. I hope you had fun learning about this unique card structure and ways that you can use what you already have in your stash to make beautiful things. I also hope that maybe you learned something new today, like how to identify the grain direction of a piece of paper, or that the bump gets buried on the inside of a fold, or that there are really great efficient ways that we can approach our scrapbooking by cutting with these pre-developed formulas that help you save on time and your resources. If you're looking for the instructions that I referenced during today's workshop, you'll want to visit our landing page we've created just for you. It's clubscrap.com forward slash slim. Just go to clubscrap.com forward slash slim and you'll be able to download the instruction document and then also get links to the resources that I used in today's workshop. Again, I'm Trisha Morris from Club Scrap and I hope to see you soon. Hey crafters, this is Trisha Morris at Club Scrap, and I just want to give you another shout out of gratitude for joining us at SSBE's at home event covering slimline cards. I hope you had a good time, and more importantly, I hope you learned a lot. If you could just do one more thing for me, just take your right hand and put it on your left shoulder, your left hand, put it on your right shoulder, give yourself a little squeeze, and consider yourself hugged. We'll see you soon.